in Bethlehem in front of the church dedicated to St. Catherine of Alexandria. Home of the parish of the Latin Rite, a large earthenware statue of St. Jerome occupies the center of the cloister, named after the doctor and father of the church, who is remembered on September 30th. On that date in 419 or 420, Jerome died in his cell a few steps away from the Grotto of the Nativity. Here the saint, a native of Dalmatia, had settled more than 30 years previously, and here his remains were buried, then transported to Rome much later by the Crusaders. In the same place restored some 40 years ago by the Franciscan father Alberto Farina, are also remembered other members of the community that followed St. Jerome in this holy place, such as St. Eusebius of Cremona, the Roman widow Paola, and her daughter Eustochium. They are also buried here in the caves that pilgrims can still visit today, separated by only a thin wall of rock from the cave where Jesus was born. He first took a trip to the Holy Land to learn more about the country, and then he decided to settle in this little place, in this remote place on earth where Jesus was born. Because of this special significance, Jerome also chose it as a place dear to his heart. He was a father of the church who placed the Bible at the center of his life. In this way, Jerome was described by Pope Benedict XVI in a general audience in 2007 dedicated to the figure of the saint. And precisely in this place, so close to his heart, Jerome completed the Latin translation of the Holy Scriptures, the Vulgate translated directly from the originals in Hebrew and Greek. In some of his letters, he gives us valuable information on how often he worked at night by the light of a candle that burned slowly and produced only a dim light. He tells us that he used the codices from a famous library, the Ecclesial Library of Caesarea by the Sea, but that he also had Jewish teachers who helped him in the interpretation of the most difficult passages. In short, Saint Jerome worked with care, using the best of everything the environment around him could provide, whether texts or people who could advise him. We try to learn on earth those truths whose substance will persist even in heaven. So wrote the author of the Vulgate in an epistle to St. Paulinus of Naula. Armed with this motivation, Jerome worked for many years in this room, which still remembers him and his work. The importance of St. Jerome's work is seen in how long his translation has lasted. He performed his work at the end of the 4th century, and for the entire Middle Ages until modern times, his translation, the Vulgate, remained the official text of the Latin Church. Now there is a new Vulgate that was revised according to modern methods, still beginning from the original texts, just as St. Jerome wanted. So I think that St. Jerome is happy with this work because it is like seeing his own principles applied with greater determination and greater ability, perhaps, by his successors.